I welcome you to the session on do's and don'ts of a product owner. Friends, I have chosen this topic because I feel product owner role is very powerful role in making the product journey successful. We may think that you know product owner is responsible for writing user stories or participating in sprint demos but that is not the whole theme of product owner even if you go by the definition of the product owner role in scrum you may not get certain insights of what a product owner role can transform the project journey the product development journey and the product success that is the reason i have chosen this topic so that we can go through the insights of the product owner role okay with this let us start our session as part of this session we are going to talk about what are the product owner roles and responsibilities defined by agile scrum and what are the do's of a product owner and what are the don'ts of a product owner okay with this let's get started at first i wanted to cover what the product owner role description in agile okay i will briefly go through it so that we are all start with our discussion on product owner role with this standard okay so agile says the product owner is the sole person responsible for managing the product backlog so the product backlog management includes clearly expressing the product backlog items that means what why and who is the aspects the product owner ensures they are explained in the user story they are explained to the team in the product backlog items and product owner is responsible for ordering the product backlog items in the product backlog to best achieve goals and missions of the product that means to achieve a higher return on investment what should be the order of product backlog items the product owner is responsible for that the product owner is responsible for optimizing the value of the work the development team performs he also ensures the product backlog is visible transparent and clear to all and shows what the scrum team will work on the next that means next sprint or next release kind of a thing he ensures the development team understands the item in the product backlog to the level needed that means if the development team says i am not very clear about this the product owner jumps into it and explains to the level where the development team member says i am clear about this particular product backlog item the product owner may do this work or he have the development team to do this see we may think that you know product owner knows everything about everything so there are teams who expects the product owner to know everything on the product backlog and he expects or the development team expects the product owner to to write everything no no the product owner is accountable for the product backlog certain items where he has clarity he will write there are certain items like technical items which he may depend upon the technical team members to write it but however he is accountable for ensuring the user stories are detailed to the level that the team requires the product owner is accountable that is for sure but however he can take the help of respect to subject matter expertise in case he lacks the knowledge it's okay he may not be knowing everything but he is accountable to ensure 
that the development team member is clear about the user story that they are developing. The product owner is one person. He not, he's not a committee. That means you cannot expect a team, a development team have multiple product owners. Okay, the product owner is one person. No one is allowed to tell the development team to work from a different set of requirements. And the development team isn't allowed to act on what anyone else says. I have come across scenarios wherein certain teams are having multiple product owners. The team is confused to whose requirements I have to fulfill. So, so that is the source of failure, right? One team should have one product owner. Product owner is a person, is not a committee. And no one in the organization can tell priorities directly to the development team. He, they have to communicate to the product owner. They have to work with the product owner to get their items prioritized, right? And for the product owner to succeed, the entire organization must respect his or her decisions. See team, what we do is we have, you know, product owner, we have scum master, we have development team, but then we have to respect their roles as well. We have the people working for those roles. And if we don't respect their responsibilities, and if we don't enable them to perform their duties, then, then you know, they can't perform, they can't contribute. So the whole organization has to respect the product owner's responsibilities, and they have to help the product owner to succeed. So these are the high level responsibilities of product owner. With this, let us talk about do's of a product owner. The first one, working with stakeholders to create a product vision. Friends, product owner is a beautiful profession, okay? He maintains a balance of upward communication and downward communication. He will be speaking with users and consumers of the product. He'll be communicating with senior management. He'll be communicating with marketing and sales to understand their perspective so that we can create a product vision together. He communicates with Scrum Master. He communicates with the development team. Product owner is a super profession, a noble profession, a role that artificial intelligence cannot automate. Friends, we are entering into machine learning. In this saga, everything will be automated, what can be repeated, but certain roles cannot be repeated. One of those roles are product owner role because it is a, such a humane role which maintains the balance between the pull between outward facing, that is users, senior management, marketing and sales, and the downward pull of Scrum Master and development team. Okay, often the pull between outward facing and inward facing demands this job to be more stressful and thus it is challenging. If you apply a humane role of interfacing towards upward, that is your users, your senior management, your marketing and sales, inward, which is scrum master and development team, right? Now, what happens is it creates a huge super balance. That is why the product owner acts on the fulcrum on the fire line between the outward pull and inward pull. And thus, this makes this role very interesting, very successful. Believe me, my friends, wherever product owner are doing great job, that means they are connecting to all stakeholders and they are able to maintain that human touch. They are able to maintain the balance well. They are able to manage the stakeholders well. Then 55% chances that the product outcome will be successful. That is why this role is important. And one of the first to do's is you should understand your stakeholders well beginning in the game and ensure that you work with human touch. Okay, so when I say uh, uh, what kind of roles the product owner can touch? Well, at the strategy and portfolio level, 
he touches the chief product owner, chief marketing officer, chief technology officer, chief executive officer, all CXOs. At the product planning level, he speaks with sponsors, consumers, and the chosen customers, the product owners, the domain experts, the technical architects. At the release level, agile program management team, technical leads, architects, product team. At sprint level, developers, scrum masters, product team. At the day level, developers, scrum masters, and product owner. Look at the beautiful, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the landscape where a product owner is placated to talk to. Almost he touches and talks to everybody. Believe me, my friends, in the product that Amazon has created, the product owners are enabled. The product owners did their stakeholder management well, right? When you handle your stakeholders well, the product owner role is amazing role, right? Now you, you speak to CXOs, sponsors, sample consumers, technical leads, architects, co-product owner team on a mission called building a good product. So that is why my friends, it is more a proactive role, right? You have to create that link. Often I see that, you know, this link is broken in many organizations. There are walls are constructed for the product owner role, but it is up to you to reach out proactively. Nobody can say no to you, my friends. You are enabled to talk to anybody and everybody on the mission of building a great product. That is why the first do's of a product owner is identify your shareholders. That means your stakeholders, handle them well. And if you do that, your job well, your stakeholders will become your shareholders. Friends, if you don't identify your stakeholders at the beginning of the game, they become your stakeholders. They become pain. So instead, convert them into your asset where you identify early in the game. You proactively go and talk and ensure that you, know, you create the whole product journey as a beautiful journey. Friends, you may say, look, I have this constraint. I have that constraint in my organization. Believe me, my friends, if, one, if many people are not doing, you be the first person to do that. You want to go to your chief product officer and say, what are the goals that you want to build? How do you think our product is going to beat our competition? What are the powerful features that you're looking in the upcoming release? Talk about it. Nobody, nobody stops you. Everybody loves to hear from you. Be the person to, to reach out to your strategy, portfolio, product, and various levels in the organization and be the face of your product. So this is the first do, okay? The second do's of product owner is focus on user experience. My friends, if you take Microsoft Excel, it has a whole lot of functions. Do you know we may be using only 2% of it? Only 2% of Excel, Microsoft Excel we are using. Remaining 98% of the features, their maintenance is so costly. So please understand the user needs, user experience. If you see the WhatsApp, right? It was designed as a lightweight product. It was having very limited features. Of course, in the recent times it got upgraded, but those features were so crucial that you know it, it was uh, easy to maintain and almost all the features that they have designed, every user was using it. See friends, keep the user experience in mind. You have got to start with the customer experience and work back towards the technology, not the other way around. So this is what is the quote told by Steve Jobs, right? You have to look outside in approach, not inside out approach, okay? Now, 74% of the businesses believe that user experience is the key for improving sales conversions and loyalty. It leads, it user experience lies at the center point of user needs, business goals, and the information about requirements, right? So that's why user experience, get the pulse of user experience, and that is the second key. We have to focus on 
this item and this theme. The third thing is the product owner should have the long-term vision always. My friends, I'm telling you in Agile, planning happens at multiple levels. You have a strategy meeting where your CEO decides the goals and objectives for portfolios. Now, based upon the strategy planning, which happens once in six months or once in one year, okay, the portfolio planning, they will decide what products they wanted to bring, that means create new products, what products they want to retire, what products they wanted to modify based upon the strategy targets that are assigned to them. So portfolio meeting happens there. And the portfolio meeting, it gives the, the guidance to the product. For example, if the portfolio uh, uh, decides that I want to create these, these, these new products, then that becomes your input to your product planning. Similarly, if there are certain products which you want to modify, so it will be enhancing the product. So strategy to portfolio to product. So that link is very important. And from the product, there is a release planning happening. Right. That means from the product planning, you basically get onto the release planning, each release, you know, how much set of features, what features you wanted to release to the external world. Similarly, sprint, sprint targets and, and daily targets. So, so basically the planning is happening at multiple levels, strategy to portfolio, to product planning, to release planning, to sprint planning and daily planning. You may ask me daily planning. Do we have another event like this? Yes your daily stand-up meeting that says, what did I do yesterday? That means you're reviewing what did you yesterday? And what am I planning to do today? That is your daily plan, right? So your sprint plan gives direction to your daily stand-up meeting, right? And your daily stand-up meeting, uh, people talk about it on what did they do yesterday? What are they planning to do today? And what are the impediments in their course or dependencies? So this strategy to portfolio, to product, to release, to sprint and daily, this connect is very, very important. Okay, now, so just if you, many product owners I see, they start either at release level or at the sprint level, but this will not take them to the course they want. This will not enable them to enjoy their role. Okay, so your strategy, what is your organization strategy? What are the targets to your portfolio? What are the products that you want to build? Why you want to build? What is the return on investment you are expecting? Which market competition you wanted to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you wanted to uh, compete with? And what is the market segmentation uh, that you wanted to focus upon? What are the market needs? All these things you, sh you should know as part of the product planning. Okay, so this kind of view is important for the product owner. Now you can question me. Oh, uh, I may not get it. I mean, my organization, these many constraints are there uh, to get this view. Then work for it, my friend. Work for it. Vouch for it. You are entitled to know this connect. And if you do not have this connect, you will be missing the very, very uh, fundamental piece while performing your role. Vouch for it. Work for it. Be the person to change it. So that's why always keep the long-term vision in mind and then decide your short-term priorities, okay? So be very clear on who is going to use our product. What are the business needs our product will address? What's the value our product will bring and which product attributes are critical? My friends, these four things, many product owners are not knowing today. That is why I'm telling you, these are the four must to have uh, uh, features that you should know, okay? And then friends, today, if you go and ask, what is my minimum viable product? When it will be built? You know, you ha should have clarity. Now you may come and ask me, uh, you know what, in some scenarios, I'm able to achieve it, but in some scenarios, I'm not able to. Friends, you are the creator of this. Vouch for it, okay? Minimum viable product you should know. And then minimum marketable product. See, minimum viable product is the set of features without which you can't see the product functioning at the basic level. For example, if you take a phone, the minimum viable product can be, you can able to call, you can able to receive the call, you should have contacts. Those are the minimum viable products. 
minimum marketable product is today if you enter the market with a basic phone you know nobody will purchase your phone you have to compete with the samsungs with the uh, uh, you know redmi realme apples right you have to compete for the price margin that you're looking for so certain set of features your competition is already offering so you have to build those things on top of that market differentiators you have to build in your product then only people will look up on your product so that is why you should be very clear about what is my minimum viable product which is a very basic functionality minimum marketable product the features which my competition is already offering i should have inside my product market differentiators these are the features which my competitors are not having and my product is having so this clarity you should have so as a product owner you should be very clear on who is going to use our product business needs our product will address value our product will bring to the table and which product attributes are critical believe me minimum viable product minimum marketable product and market differentiators Th these things are very very critical and you should have the mind map in terms of building your product in these lines so friends uh, going with this uh, psychology so so your product planning is very important what is product planning you have your walking skeleton where all your columns so shows the kind of themes that your users want to explore for example if you uh, you know take facebook as an example you have sign up you have offerings you have settings posting friend request groups a home page messaging and exit these are the uh, you know vertical themes that your users want to see okay now under each theme you will have more mandatory user stories on the top and optional user stories on the bottom so the user stories are arranged in the in the order of their optionality means less optional that is they are very mandatory their top more optional or at the bottom so once you arrange the sto user stories in this way now you will cut okay now this is what is my first cut for my mvp this is the second cut uh, uh, you know for the second release this is the third release so second and third release together forms my minimal minimum marketable mar product first release is my minimum viable product and the final release is minimum or, or market differentiators for us so please have clarity about your product roadmap planning in many scenarios the product owners are not left with this opportunity i understand but my friends if you do this then only you are going to show value to your product you may be building a new product or you may be maintaining or upgrading a product we should have this product roadmap in our mind so that this this is the outcome of product planning and this product planning uh, you know gives clarity to release planning because in product planning you not only see the whole uh, comprehensive picture of which feature is linked to which theme and how it brings value so from product planning you are deriving targets for a release planning like you see here the light green is mvp first release the the here this color is uh, the the second release and the third one is third release and the fourth release so this section of features are required for the first release likewise from the product planning you are basically deriving the objectives for release planning how can we release value incrementally what subset of business objectives will each release achieve what user constituencies will be will release sir right so basically what is the objective of this release? it is not sufficient that you draw certain line every release you should able to quantify in terms of their objectives what kind of objectives objectives it will serve what kind of market segment it 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 fulfill what kind of differentiators it bring all those objectives you should able to quantify you and then once you are clear about release objectives it will give clarity about your sprint objectives because in release objective you know these 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 objective you should fulfill now you take each of the objectives and try to serve it in one or two or multiple sprints so 
the release planning will give input to your iteration or sprint planning. What specifically we built, what user stories we built, and how will this sprint move us towards the release objectives? And then the release or sprint objectives will give input to backlog items. What user or stakeholder need will the story serve? How will it specifically look and behave? How will it determine if it is completed? See, my friends, if you have this clarity, you will be in a position to say clearly what is to be built, why it is to be built. Friends, I'm telling you today, many product owners are coming to sprint planning session with available user stories. Certain times, because of certain organizational constraints, people are not enabled to know the connect between the product planning to the release planning to the sprint planning. And thus, they are not able to explain uh, or define proper user stories. See, I'm telling you, people will remember you for life if you are able to explain, guys, I need these, these, these user stories in this order because if you build these user stories, we will able to complete one theme to the end users. And if this end theme is released to the end users, the kind of value generated is this, and it gives so-and-so advantage. So you should able to clearly say what is to be built when you have a clear connect between product planning objectives to release planning objectives to sprint objectives to user story objectives. And that will create a great uh, value to the team because on the ground, team is having high energy to build. The moment you make them part of a great story, a story where the consumers are getting benefited because of their efforts, they will be motivated to build even more efficient stories. So you should have the, you should practice business value thinking and you should create product backlog user stories. You see an onion here, it is called layers. So in agile planning, the planning happens in layers product planning, to release planning, to sprint planning, to user story planning. This is called onion layers, the layered thinking, where you basically practice the business value thinking and you connect the value from product planning objectives to user story objectives, okay? Now, so as you all know, you know uh, we have to craft a product backlog. My friends, I'm using the word crafting. Crafting is much more passionate and artistic term compared to writing, right? You have to craft, you own product owner. As a product owner, you own the product backlog. You are accountable, right? It contains the product backlog items in an order specified by you, that means the product owner. You can take the considerations like risk, business value, dependencies, by, by which due date it is needed, okay? Each product backlog item should be described in just enough detail that the team can complete in one sprint. That means we cannot have large user stories where in plan itself, it can span up to two or three sprints. We have to slice the user stories meeting the definition of ready, okay? And you know the definition of ready consists of invest criteria and meeting that we have to define the user stories, okay? So, and then the product backlog consists of business features, technical stories, defects, knowledge improvements, enhancements, everything that is needed for the product, okay? If some feature is not in the product backlog, that means it is not in the product scope, okay? Now, user story, the art of writing. My friends, I come across many good product owners who are very good at handwriting and they write very neatly on sticky notes, okay? It, user story gives much more details than waterfall way of requirements, okay? So what user story not only says what to build, it also says who is requesting this, what is being requested and why is being requested. Who is requesting, what is being requested and why it is requested. So this who, what and why, when you club it, when you encapsulate it, it gives beautiful meaning to the requirement. Why? Because often the product owners who create requirements, the moment they pass it to the developer, 
they clearly understand the whole purpose of it. In waterfall way of requirements, only what is to be built is there, who is requesting and why, is, why it has been requested that was missing. And because of which it was leading to a not proper uh, product enablement. So that's why Agile has come up with you the story. Take good example of it, take leverage, leverage this particular opportunity, write it well, okay? Each user story should have acceptance criteria, okay? And it should be defined in the template that we described, okay? Now, the next opportunity is contribute to effective product backlog grooming. My friends, I understood now that if you want a proper sprint outcome during sprint review, you have to start with product backlog grooming, not at the sprint planning. Why? Because 85% of user stories that are prioritized for a sprint are often groomed in the product backlog grooming sessions earlier. Only last 10 to 15% of the requirements, ad hoc requirements or last uh, minute prioritization that can creep into a uh, sprint backlog. So that's why on the sprint planning day, you may want to groom only 10% of the user stories. But 85% of the user stories or 90% of the user stories that should have been groomed in the earlier grooming session. So that is why grooming session is very, very important. So I request product owners to do your homework. I have seen certain product owners who come to the grooming session and they start doing their work there. They just bring in one title requirement there and they uh, wait or they take time off the development team to create more details into it. So this is not correct. You have to do your homework. You have to write user story in the defined template. What are the acceptance criteria? What is the uh, you know, happy path? What are the failure paths? What are the alternate paths? What are the boundary paths? What are the performance criteria? And any upstream and downstream dependencies you can think of, whether wireframes you wanted to build, mockups you want to build, any risks that you wanted to mention, any assumptions, any constraints, any pending clarifications, you have to do your homework. And you also need to communicate to the team, guys, in three days from now, uh, we are going to have a product backlog grooming session. In the grooming session, I, we wanted to uh, you know, aim to uh, uh, groom these set of six stories. So I have uh, you know, detailed it in Jira or version one in Rally software, and you can go through it. These are the IDs of um, these user stories. You can look at it. So if you communicate to the team at least three days in advance, they can also go through it and they come to grooming session with some preparation and that will help. Now in the grooming session, uh, you know, it is not that, you know, product owner knows everything. No, product owner is accountable for sure. In some areas, he can create and detail all the uh, uh, listed ideas or listed themes on his own. In certain areas, he may require the input from the team. In certain areas, he may depend upon uh, some other subject matter experts, right? So we cannot expect the product owner to know everything and every, anything. He, need, he does his job, he comes prepared, but he requires inputs from the technical experts, from the domain experts or certain functional experts, right? So he's accountable for sure, but all other subject matter experts, they need to uh, support this role to ensure the product backlog grooming happens properly. My friends, in product backlog grooming session, proper conversations has to happen. What is the user story? Is it being defined in that given template? What is the acceptance criteria? That means given a specific context, when a trigger happens, then expected condition. Are we describing the acceptance criteria properly? And are we covering all the possible acceptance criteria? and upstream dependencies, downstream dependencies, are we identifying properly? Because certain times product owner um, may come forward with 80% thinking, but the team can add 20% more information because conversations always, uh, you know, you know, gives more inputs, more uh, flesh uh, uh, and meat to the user stories. So what are the wireframes? And what are the risks? What are the assumptions? What are the constraints? And what are the pending clarifications? So these uh, uh, information has to be told, discussed, and 
documented in the uh, Jira or version one or rally software. And on top of that, uh, team also uh, grooms the size, uh, the size estimation and story points they do. So in, it is also important that in some, thing, in some cases where you know, teams are uh, uh, having an expectation, you are the product owner, you should know everything, right? Once you create your other stories, then only we can talk. So such certain kind of uh, pressure uh, uh, team uh, puts on the product owners in some scenarios. We have to explain to them, guys, I'm accountable. I'm responsible and accountable in these, these areas. Here I take responsibility of giving 80% detail, but 20% more detail will be added during grooming session. But there are certain functional areas like finance, accounting, reporting, or uh, you know, uh, uh, deployment, DevOps, infra. I need some experts uh, from the respective streams uh, to come and help me. I can I'm respond, I'm accountable, but they are responsible, okay? And we can consent. So this RASI matrix, if we establish for the area-wise, then it makes the situation very clear. Who is responsible, who is accountable, who is consulted, who is informed on specific area-wise will always help. Okay, so, so basically we have to ensure that you know uh, sufficient user stories which are in definition of ready states, at least for upcoming three sprints are there at any given point in time. This is the fifth dose of a product owner. The sixth one is contribute to high performance team building. See friends, I'm telling you at the end of the day, you are the face of customer to the team and you are the team representation to your customers, to your consumers, to your senior management, to your marketing, to your sales, right? So you have to own your team, okay? So um, you have to own your team and we have to own it by example. See, there is no power or there is no hierarchy given to a product owner. But however, by virtue of he championing the product, he can always use that lever efficiently so that he can be closer to the team, right? So protect the team and uh, um, uh, from the outside noise. For example, as a product owner, if uh, uh, you know other persons are coming and giving uh, priority items to the team members, you should protect. Guys, I'm the product owner. This is what has to be built. If anything that has to be prioritized for the team, please come through me. But team will take prioritized user stories from me. We have to protect it. In the absence of protecting the team from outside noise, the team will lose trust on us. So that's why one of the role is, you know, it is your responsibility to protect your team uh, and, and so that, you know, they respect your responsibilities and they take the prioritized items from you, number one. And you have to trust the team. You have to own your team's pluses and minuses. There will always be certain uh, uh, plus team members there will be neutral team members. There will be minus team members. We own everything, not just pluses, but everything, right? So trust the team and work like a mentor and coach. See team, I'm telling you today uh, on the ground, uh, uh, many people want to be part of successful story. Uh, so they want a helping hand. Go and talk to them, have a coffee, info, have an informal chat, do you see that you know uh, you are stuck? Uh, you do you require me to be with you in terms of seeing how the the uh, user story is coming along? I'm always available for you. Kind of a internal facing also you show and create a safe environment. See the team member should be automatically uh, willing to come and talk to you. So so we also need to do a little bit of uh, uh, public relation, like a team member relations. Uh, so that you know, they come to us. At the end of the day, their outcome is what you have to represent to your end stakeholders. So you, you trust the team, you own the team, you work like a mentor, you work like a parent, like, you know, parent, you know, uh, uh, even though they do not know the specific subject to the child, but they'll say, okay, can I help uh, some tuition master to help you learn this? So the way the parent uh, wants the success of their child, the product owner also should extend and own their team and they should help and they should mentor, they should coach their team and be available to the team and create that safe environment so that you know they can find that comfort in reaching out to you. 
So at the end of the day, contribute to high performance team building in, uh, by working with the team members and the scrum masters, right? When we are working for good practices, nobody stops us, okay? So this is the sixth uh, do. The seventh one is contribute to effective sprint planning and sprint reviews. See friends, I have seen certain product uh, owners uh, uh, because they are very much loaded. Uh, you know, I have already given proper clarity in the sprint, uh, in the grooming. So I may not be needed on the sprint planning. You can reach out to me if you need is what is the statement the product owner says. But the point, my friend, see, at the end of the day, the sprint outcome is what you have to represent to the end stakeholders. So what happens is if you spare, if you prioritize attending sprint planning, uh, ensuring that your team members really understand uh, the, the priority of items. See, the most important thing is if you can able to connect the prioritized user stories and derive the value those six stories, let us say one six stories uh, is what you are prioritizing for the sprint. And you can go and say, look guys, these are the six stories. And if you have any questions, ask me. And if we complete these six stories, then we will be able to complete this part of the objective. And this will actually help us in terms of achieving end user satisfaction like this. So if you can able to establish a sprint goal, and the benefit and the connect to the user stories that is where the team likes uh, and, you know the connect and they will say okay let me complete this user story as well uh, let me let me do my bit and ensure that you know the whole objective is met so that is how they respond but often on the ground i see that you know uh, uh, the connect of the user stories prioritized for the sprint planning to the sprint goal or release goal is not told on the ground so if you are able to do that, you will be the product owner who makes the different and differentiation. Okay. And sprint outcome. That means in sprint reviews also, see, even sprint review is a formal meeting where team conducts at the end of the sprint. But however, you need to have your own cues, your own ways of gazing the progress of each user story so that you can help prevent any obstacles. Right. So instead of learning why user story is half completed on the sprint review, if you know about it early, you can basically see how you can protect uh, the team by resolving those impediments. So uh, you do a little bit of your formal, informal uh, ways of reaching out to team, understanding with an intent of resolving any impediments and ensure that sprint review comes out well. Right, friends, I'm telling you today, uh, uh, you know, you are given certain team, you have to coach the team, you have to mentor the team so that you get best out of the team, right? It is not about, I give you the expectations, you have to meet it. I don't think it will be done. You have to uh, uh, work with the team, ensure that you, you also resolve any impediments or issues uh, and try to see that the team performs best and the sprint outcome comes out best. And in the sprint review, and you also need to say very clearly that this part of the acceptance criteria is met, this part of the acceptance criteria is not met. And also do a right role in terms of awarding story points. For example, in a five story uh, user story, five story point user story, if uh, only half of it is done, then probably you say, okay, I'm able to see the value for the first two acceptance criteria. And so I'm only, uh, uh, you know, awarding uh, two points to you. Be, do right job. Don't do nice job. You can be nice, but ultimately you need to be right. Okay. Being nice, you should be doing right. Right is more preferred than nice. Right. So not only this, even for sprint planning also, while defining user stories, you have to bring in user stories which can be completed within a sprint. And you have to identify acceptance criteria, which is as per vertical slicing. That means, you know, each acceptance criteria should add certain value to the end user. So there are certain situations wherein team comes and says, my development is done, testing is not done. So award me half user story points. Don't do that. Development is done, but I can't show the value to the end user. So what can I do with this? 
So I don't want to give you any uh, user story. See, as long as you show me the acceptance criteria uh, uh, fully functional, working, and tested, then I can give. But but if you are doing horizontally, like you know horizontal development and then testing, I can't give you the stories. I I will award you the stories in the next sprint when it is fully completed. So you have to do a right job. For that, you need to spend time for sprint planning and sprint review, and we have to be with the team because these are the touch points where if you are if you do a good sprint planning, and if the team understands it clearly, then the probability of your sprint review being uh, uh, more successful is more. So we have to contribute, be with the team, be like a like a servant leader and ensure the sprint planning and sprint review sessions are you know contributed well from your end okay so the another thing friends i'm telling you there's a connect between product planning release planning and sprint planning now the sprint review happens now and this sprint planning happens for multiple teams right and now time to time you need to understand okay at the end of every sprint this is what is the value i realized this is where i stand at the release level for example my release planning is talking about let's say um 60 story points worth of work now we are able to deliver 20 uh, at the end of first sprint that means we are one third of the journey similarly where we stand with this release with respect to product that means we are 10% of the product we are 20% of the release and likewise you should able to connect the dots that means there needs to be a communication among the uh, cross product owners and there needs to be this understanding this understanding on the overall progress need to be consolidated it should be uh, stored at the uh, single truth mm, mm, software that means in a common place right so that everybody will be having same view saying that okay out of overall product we are able to build 10% in the current release we are able to deliver 20% of the progress after the sprint to one progress so from time to time i am requesting you uh, you know to connect the dots <coughs> to connect the dots and and ensure that where we are with respect to overall product my friends in many organizations this piece is missing so from time to time the connect between product planning release planning sprint planning at the end of every release from multiple teams how much progress we are able to make with respect to release and where we stand where we stand with respect to overall product is also very very important okay the ninth one is seek continuous feedback communicate and adapt see team i am telling you uh, see many product owners they focus only on the development team you can do wonders right guys we delivered four sprints and uh, you know i am actually I, i'm inv inviting so and so user or so and so person for the uh, upcoming sprint demo so far they are happy uh, on these these points they felt these features are not meeting their expectations so can we uh, uh, can we reflect on it in the coming retrospective and see how we can do our job better so see basically certain users or marketing persons or senior management they may not be willing to provide you formal feedback but always informally you can ask and informally you can give a safe uh, environment to them that i just want your early feedback so that i can communicate back to the team so i have seen product owners who only focus on inward focus to development team but i feel that you know they are the communicating points between the inward facing to outward facing your development team would love to listen from you uh, whatever feedback that users are facing on the last sprint deliverables because last sprint is just completed and their memory is fresh if if you are able to tell so and so user have used it they liked it very nice very nicely and they have given so and so feedback let us implement it in the upcoming sprint that is where you are acting as the you know uh, floating points you are acting as a bridge between the outward facing to inward inward facing so this is a beautiful opportunity take feedback as a gift and it can actually help a lot in connecting uh, the product journey towards its objectives 
Okay, so what are the do's that we have seen so far? Okay, there are nine do's we have said. Work with your stakeholders to create product vision. We discussed about outward stakeholders and inward stakeholders. Product owner is enabled to talk to almost all levels in an organization. Use that opportunity efficiently. Resolve the barriers on your own. Be an enthusiastic, optimistic product owner and try to create your own communication channels and ensure that you, know, you work towards uh, success of the project. Second, you have to focus on user experience. User experience in 74% cases, it gives good business benefits. So you have to think from outside in. Okay, you have to look backward while building the product. Keep long-term vision always in mind. That means you don't look for uh, you know, short-term benefits. Even though you are deciding the priorities for the sprint, you keep your product vision, product strategy, and your release objectives in mind, and you decide. This is where you contribute to successful projects. For example, if you take the products of Amazon, right? They were crafted with such a, uh, a, a vision in mind, right? So I can't say 100% vision they had, but at least 80 to 85% vision they had. So every feature they're building, they have a connect between where this user story is fitting, which business objectives or user objectives it is helping. So that long-term vision, if you have, that actually guides you to say clearly what needs to be built and why it needs to be built. And then practice business value thinking and craft the product backlog. We have just discussed about it and contribute to effective product backlog grooming. See friends, I'm telling you product backlog grooming and sprint planning are the uh, opportunities where you are actually uh, uh, touching the ground. Your rubber is touching the ground. So you have to be very careful. You have to do your job well. Okay, and then you have to help in terms of building a high performance team uh, in terms of uh, creating the trust, creating that safe environment where your team members are free to come and talk to you. See, I, one thing I'm understanding my friends nowadays, uh, that hierarchical structure is not anymore. Uh, it may be for the uh, documentation purpose, but with the knowledge workers that we are working, everybody, uh, want relevance and value. As long as we bring relevance and value, uh, 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 people are uh, uh, free to talk to us because people on the ground also want uh, uh, you know, value to be created. So they love to talk to us as long as we are relevant and value driven. So, so make sure that you, know, you, you trust them, you own them, you own their positives, you own their negatives, try to coach them, try to connect different people, work with Scrum Master, and make sure that you, know, you work for high performance team and contribute to sprint planning and sprint reviews. And uh, uh, see, you can be nice, but you have to be right. You have, because in terms of you know, what are the story points that you want to award, you should be very clear. So the moment you say, these are the story points that I want to give, because this part of the acceptance criteria only is met, then this is where you basically uh, uh, make the team on the toes because you are clear in terms of avoiding. Similarly, uh, time to time across the product, see what's the overall progress that is being built, right? And uh, make sure that, you know, multiple sprint outcomes are leading to the release of these, these release objectives are met. My next release objective will be met in a couple of sprints. So likewise, you should have that clarity. And these release objectives should map to your product objectives. So where you stand on the product objectives, where you stand on the release objectives, and you can connect the sprint and communicating that particular achievement of those objectives to the team members, that makes the great story scripted. And seek the feedback from the external people, from internal people, and the feedback and uh, can be their feedback and my feedback. That means you can ask, guys, how can I be more uh, useful to you? Uh, are there any patterns in me that makes you feel uncomfortable? Or are there any patterns in me that you want more of it? So you can think about seeking feedback. See, feedback need not be formal. You can be informal as well. Because our objective is to change. Our objective is to create better tomorrow. Our objective is to create more alignment towards the project objectives and team objectives. So these are the do's of a product owner. 
let's come to the don'ts of a product owner the first don't is pressurize the team to deliver more see friends i have worked with a project where the product owner worked in a remote location he uh, 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 always commands the team he uh, 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 brings you know uh, by this time if these 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 user stories are not completed so and so stakeholders will be unhappy and uh, and you know the pressure goes to an extent that you know scrum master has to uh, uh, really he feels that you know product owner is the customer to him uh, who is not believing in the team so i've seen uh, uh, wherein the product owner the sorry scrum master maintains every sub task he ensures that the time is remaining time is updated time to time because the product owner looks at everything everything and he questions writes more of emails and he pressurizes that you know and at the end of the day one in a sprint demo if one percent is not met he uses that opportunity to 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 really beat the team right so pressurizing the team to deliver the more often you know what the chief product owners and product owners they will have more access to the marketing officers and in any organization marketing and product they have more say in terms of having power and certain product owners are more connected to their bosses and who enjoys more power and they turn that power in terms of you know creating some uh, difficult situation to the team so that is not correct right if you don't deliver i will escalate that is not uh, uh, the pattern that you want i've seen product owners who are escalating about their own team saying that this is done this is not done many a times not just in one example in many examples they escalate about their team saying that guys you need to look about different ways now some let, let's say some user story is half completed now can we have one on one discussion with that person uh, in terms of why it is not there so scrum master now starts treating product owner as a, a demanding customer uh, that is not the right so in the first two points i'm seeing in any organization uh, marketing and product and finance they gains more power and the moment the product owner is more reachable and he enjoys the trust of senior management you can turn that trust in such a way uh, you know where harmony gets built the right things get built but you cannot use that uh, uh, power in terms of pressurizing the team in terms of escalating team in terms of writing more emails about team performance i think such kind of product owners we have seen that's not correct the third is influencing the team on the solution see usually uh, 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 you know they, these these are the patterns you see where uh, people uh, come from development background so they they spend some time on development and they come to the product owner because they feel they are liking their profession and now once they are in the product owner role uh, because they are also having touch about development uh, uh, so they wanted to say okay this way also you can do this way also you can do likewise see friends i'm telling you in films also hero when he performs director role or a director when he performs a hero role not many times successful stories are there when you are a product owner be like a product owner you can only tell what to be built but how it is we have to we may suggest but you know we cannot influence or enforce to implement the same thing then the next thing is changing the sprint backlog uh, items in the mid of the sprint yes there are certain business uh, challenges we have and whatever may be the uh, situation if we keep changing uh, the sprint backlog items in the mid of the sprint the whole uh, seriousness will get lost see friends i'm telling you practically uh, if we uh, 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 default on 1% of the criteria our workforce will default on 40% of criteria see building a standard um, respecting team is not easy we have to see as a leader you have to maintain standards if you maintain standards 100 times your team maintain standard one time okay so if you want 1% result you have to be implementing those standards 100% times so if we ourselves change the sprint backlog items the seriousness will get lost the product outcome will get lost and everything will get lost so we cannot 
be changing the sprint backlog items in the middle of the sprint. We have to educate our spring, our uh, stakeholders about it. Okay, but of course you have your own challenges. I understand there are see many people they are saying agile, 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 but you know they are not uh, at least especially especially the senior management they are not uh, understanding the spirit of agile. Uh, uh, they come up. They come across a commanding phase to us, which is difficult to uh, solve. Uh, that is why agile projects are failing because of people factor only. So I understand, but ultimately those challenges we have to solve. But we should not uh, let the team suffer because of that. We cannot afford to change the sprint backlog items in the middle of the sprint. And then also there are certain teams where I see the roadmap is not built because I have worked with certain engagements when I say, uh, you know, we, we need um, uh, a roadmap planning. Uh, you know, they're only coming up with first print, first print, first print. Uh, even for one time also, they are unable to build a roadmap. Uh, why? Because their thought process is like this. See, if you cannot see, uh, uh, you know, three months, then what kind of, you know, objectives you can meet for the product? Right, so you are in the short sight, meaning you are missing the long sight. And if you are missing the long sight, uh, and you only have short sight, that means you will be building whatever items that are there on the plate. So, so that's where you see that product owners fills backlog items with uh, whatever is available. Uh, um, whatever is available only, they will say, okay, remaining you you create some technical items is what they say. And then uh, certain product owners are available to the team only during sprint planning and sprint review meetings. This is because uh, product owners are overloaded. They have their own challenges. This is something that management has to resolve because uh, you know, to really mentor the team, to really uh, uh, you know, uh, bring the best from the team, sprint planning, uh, product backlog grooming meeting, sprint review meeting, these are the touch points. And these touch points, we have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, deal with more humane touch for that more available time is needed. And uh, if a uh, product owner is overloaded and uh, he's not having sufficient time to spend with the team on sprint planning and sprint review meetings, that is something that management has to resolve. Uh, so, so this is the another don't from the product owner. Then 100% remote working to the team that you own. I've seen certain... Uh, uh, product owners who are located in different countries and the development team is in another country. Now, uh, mm, uh, you know, then what happens is the communication, uh, 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 mostly in remote uh, working, it will become a problem, right? The, pro the team starts thinking product owner as somebody who is external to them. The moment they start thinking product owner as external, that's a gone case. So to resolve this, I've seen product owners are traveling to the team site quite often, at least twice a month, uh, twice a quarter, or they may even designate a business analyst who are closer to the uh, team and so that they can work through the business analyst. So these are the ways they used to solve this problem. And then uh, 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 last one is failing to show the team. For example, I've seen teams, they will be in sprints, 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 They'll be taking sprint backlog, they'll be working. They'll be sprint backlog, they'll be working. But ultimately, whatever work they have worked, how it connected to the overall release or product objectives, how it has uh, connected to the overall run on investments, how it is connected to the minimum viable product, how it is connected to the minimum marketable product, how it is connected to the differentiators. If we are not able to show the connect to the team and tell them, then you know the team will not be realizing what part of the story they are for. They will only be thinking, what yeah, I'm in sprints, 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 sprints. Some stories they create, they tell, and uh, we will be repeatedly working on those things. And you know, they'll be missing that piece of part of a great story. So that's why we have to show to the team at the end of the sprint, guys, these user stories you have created. And because of this, this kind of value is realized. And we are having the demo with end consumers on Sunset day, and this is the feedback given. And we are closure by 45%, another 55% of the progress is left. You're doing great job. So motivate them with overall outcomes. Team, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, uh, it's just not the salary or monetary uh, motivation uh, everybody works with. 
of course monetary recommendation monetary uh, uh, benefits are important but more importantly everybody want to be part of value adding story and that value adding story gives lot of motivation so that is also one of the motivating factors to get the best from the team and to retain the team members in the team for long so these are the don'ts from a product owner so in brief we have seen nine do's and nine don'ts so this is what is the summary so i wanted to thank you for your time i just wanted to let you know my friends that you know product owner is very very important profession it is a human touched profession that connects both outside business and inside business so it's a such a value adding uh, position and believe me uh, more creativity is needed here more practicality is needed here more business thinking is needed here so product owner is such a great profession if we understand uh, 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 the value of it okay so what i'm conveying my friends is product owner is not a role where you know okay he comes and he gives requirements okay he gives you the stories okay we talk it's not okay role of friends if you are performing like okay the product also will be okay okay it will not beat the competition so friends i'm telling you the market demands are very very high right the competitors are working like you know in the market you know uh, one and two uh, uh, top two organizations are bet with 11th and 12th in the ranking right it is not one and two organizations are met with competition third and four often the 11th and 12th organization is beating one and two because they are doing simple things with quality with speed okay so that is why my friends if an organization has to be successful the product owner need to be successful if the organization need to be successful the product need to be successful if the product need to be successful the product owner should be the right person and he should be enabled and everybody should help that role to become successful so with this i thank your time uh, in on this saturday night uh, and i really appreciate it i look forward to add more value adding sessions in future thank you